Okay, welcome back. We're still talking about derivatives and the definition of a derivative. And we're going to work through three more examples here, uh, finding the derivative, derivative of a function based on the definition of the derivative. And then after that, we'll start learning some shortcuts and some t techniques for doing these rapidly and accurately. But let's see the definition of a derivative applied to this function. f of x is the square root of x. So the derivative here, f prime of x, is going to be the limit as delta x approaches 0 of f of x plus delta x minus f of x over delta x. So let's apply this concept to this function. We'll differentiate this function. So what's f of x plus delta x? Well I need to take this x plus delta x and stick it in for the variable x right there. So this is going to be the square root. Oh, actually, I need to write limit out here. The limit as delta x approaches 0 of f of x plus delta x. And that's going to be the square root of x plus delta x. And then we have minus f of x, which is simply the square root of x. And all that is over delta x. Now, if we plug in delta x right here, if we just substitute delta x is 0 right here and here, we get 0 over 0. And so we can't take the limit. So we need to try to simplify this. So the way to simplify this is to look at this expression involving the radicals there and multiply by the conjugate of that. So I'm going to multiply by the square root of x plus delta x plus the square root of x over that same thing, the square root of x plus delta x plus the square root of x. Now obviously this thing that I just multiplied by is equal to 1. So multiplying by 1 is perfectly legal. I haven't changed uh, changed this any just by multiplying it by 1. And you wonder how did I come up with this expression? Well this is just the conjugate of this. All I did was change this minus sign to a plus sign. Multiplying by the conjugate is one of the standard approaches for simplifying expressions involving radicals. So let's work this out now. We have the limit as delta x approaches 0 and up top here we need to do a FOIL. This is one binomial multiplied by another. So let's work that out. When we do the first terms square root of this times the square root of this, well that's the same thing under the radical in both cases, so that just works out to x plus delta x. And then whenever you multiply by a conjugate, what happens is your outer and inner terms of the FOIL process disappear. You can see this happen. This is going to be the square root of x plus delta x times the square root of x. And then when we do the inner, it's going to be the square root of x plus delta x times the negative square root of x. So I'm not even going to bother to write all that out because those are just going to cancel out. And then the FOIL is first, outer, inner, and last. The outer, inner just canceled out, so now I need to multiply the last. And the negative square root of x times the square root of x is just negative x. So that simplified real nicely. Now down on the bottom, we still have delta x times all of this, the square root of x plus delta x plus the square root of x. And all of that is down on the bottom. Now the thing to note is that up top, this x and the minus x cancel out, and then we're left with delta x all by itself up top. And that delta x all by itself will cancel out the one down here. So I'm going to cross all of those out. We're simply left with a 1 up top after everything cancels out. So we have the limit as delta x approaches 0 of 1 over this, the square root of x plus delta x plus the square root of x. And we can take the limit of this. As delta x approaches 0, this term disappears. So that's going to go away and we'll just be left with 1 over the square root of x plus the square root of x, which you would write as 1 over 2 times the square root of x. And if you want to write the same thing in exponential form, you could write 1 half x to the negative 1 half.